Okay, so moving on to the next storage device that comes under primary memory. So we just completed RAM. We saw random access memory. We saw the functions of it. Now the next thing is read only memory. So this also comes under primary memory, okay? So the first thing to notice a feature of a ROM is that it's non-volatile, meaning that data is not lost when power is turned off, okay? So when you shut down your computer, whatever data is there in your ROM, remains okay it's not erased it's not lost it remains okay right the next thing it says is in uh most digital devices most digital devices the ROM chip contains a program called basic input output system okay so it stands for bios okay so this program basically it stands for bios okay so BIOS defines how your computer starts up. Okay, so this program BIOS, which is stored in your ROM chip, this program simply defines how your computer starts up. The instructions on how your computer starts up are stored in your ROM chip. Okay, and that program is what we call BIOS. Okay, so when you switch on your computer, when you switch on your computer, whether it's your, uh, whether it's your desktop, laptop, smartphone, tab, it doesn't matter. Any computer that you switch on, BIOS is the first program to be loaded. Is it clear? So BIOS will be the first program. It will load and tell your computer how to start up. And thereafter, only after BIOS is loaded, only thereafter, the operating system is loaded. Okay. Now, some of you all might be wondering, well, when is BIOS loaded and all that? So normally when you switch on your laptop, for example, you get that screen, right? For example, if you're using an HP laptop, it says HP for about one, two seconds. And thereafter, the operating system starts, isn't it? When you switch on your smartphone, it'll first say Samsung for about four or five seconds. And thereafter, Android starts, isn't it? So that part where the logo appears, the logo of your device appears, that is the point. That is the part where BIOS is being loaded. Okay, that is the BIOS loading point. Okay, it takes a very, very few seconds. Let me just show you in my computer. In my computer, BIOS takes approximately, uh, when I come to start up, it takes approximately 6.2 seconds only. Okay, it takes a very short time. Okay, and thereafter immediately your operating system loads. Okay, so remember guys, by, when, you talk, when you talk about the ROM chip, it has a very simple function, which is it has a program called BIOS. And BIOS defines how your computer starts up. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's all we have for the. Uh, that's all we have for the ROM chip. Okay, so over here I have shown you a picture of a ROM chip. Okay, and they are normally embedded into your motherboard. Okay, so normally your ROM chip you cannot change it; it's embedded. Okay, you have to use what is given. Okay. And inside this ROM chip, you have a program called BIOS, which defines how your device starts up. Okay, right. Over here, guys, I have given you, this is from our textbook itself, the difference between the RAM and ROM. So stores data when power is off. So the RAM is volatile, which means it does not store anything. However, the ROM is non-volatile, so it stores data even when there is no power. Can swap instructions in and out? RAM, yes. So RAM, when you open a program, instructions are sent to the RAM. When you close a program, it is taken out from your RAM. However, this does not happen in the ROM. In the ROM, there is no adding a program, removing a program, that doesn't happen. You have only one program called BIOS and that program is always there in your ROM chip, okay? Accessible in any order, that applies for both, okay? Both RAM and ROM can be accessed in any order, okay? Sorry. Intended to store, so RAM stores data temporarily, okay? For as long as you're working on that file, the RAM will hold it. The moment you close it, it's removed from your RAM chip, okay? So RAM stores data temporarily, okay? While the ROM stores data permanently, okay? It's there, even if the power goes off, the data is uh, <clears throat> still held in your ROM chip. And then can be upgraded, yes, your RAM chip can be upgraded. Okay, I told you from, for devices like a desktop or a laptop, RAM can be upgraded. You have a 2 GB RAM, you can upgrade it to 4 GB, okay? However, ROM, you cannot upgrade it, okay? It's something like this, where you cannot even remove it from your motherboard, okay? Right, okay, so just give me a second there. Uh, I think we have a bit of a problem which we need to escape, okay. Right, 
Moving on to the RAM, guys, there's a little more information that we have about your computer's ROM chip, okay, about the ROM. Right, now, so far, I have told you the function of the ROM. The function of the ROM is it contains a program called BIOS, and this program defines how your computer starts up. So basically, guys, if your ROM chip is not present, your ROM chip is not working, your computer is not even going to switch on because it will not know how to start up. Is it clear? So if the ROM chip is missing, if the ROM chip is not working, your computer will not display anything. It will not even know how to come on. Okay, right. Now, guys, when we speak about ROM, okay, so ROM is generally used to refer to memory that cannot be changed after manufacturing. Okay, after it has been manufactured, you cannot change it. So, for example, if you are using a Lenovo laptop, is there any way you can, when you switch on your laptop, instead of Lenovo appearing, you want HP to appear? You can't do that, okay? Because data in the ROM is read-only. You cannot rewrite it. You cannot change it. It's read-only. You can only read what is there. Is it clear? So data in the ROM chip cannot be changed, okay? Once it has been manufactured, thereafter, data in the ROM chip cannot be changed, okay? We have a different type of ROM, okay? We have a different type of ROM, which is called PROM, okay? And it stands for Programmable Read-Only Memory. Okay, we have a different type of ROM chip, okay, that is known as PROM, and it stands for Programmable Read-Only Memory. Now, with PROM, data can only be written to it once, okay, which means that when it comes to your PROM chip, you can only add data to it, or you can only add new data to it only once. Thereafter, you cannot make any changes to the data stored in it, okay? So let me go through this again. Data in the ROM, you can never change it. After it has been manufactured, after it has been produced, you cannot make any changes to it. However, for PROM, you can make a change only once. You can add new data to it only once. Thereafter, you cannot make any changes to it. So then there is another type of ROM chip as well, okay? So we have seen ROM, we have seen PROM, and then we have something known as uh, EEPROM, Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. Now, when it comes to EEPROM, Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory, okay, uh, one second. Uh, one minute, one minute, one minute. So we saw ROM, we saw PROM, and the next one is EEPROM, Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. And thereafter, we also have EEPROM, okay? Now, the difference between these two is coming up in our next slide, okay? So guys, I'm just going to go through this again because I feel like my explanation might have confused you, okay? So ROM chip, once it is manufactured, once it is produced in the factory, thereafter, users cannot make any changes to it, okay? That was wrong. Then we have something called PROM, Programmable Read-Only Memory. Now, this memory chip, after it has been manufactured, after it has been produced, the user can only make a change to it only once. Only once a change can be made, okay? Now, in addition to PROM, we also have EEPROM and EEPROM, okay? So EEPROM can also be called flash memory, okay? Since it's such a long name, we can simply refer to it as flash memory. Now, I'm going to show you the difference between these two and how they work, okay? Right. The contents of EEPROM and EEPROM can be erased and then rewritten to. Okay, so data in the EEPROM chip and the EEPROM chip, you can add new data to it, you can remove the data, you can make modifications to it. That can be done. Okay, data stored in EEPROM, okay, electrically programmable read only memory, can be erased by exposing it to strong ultraviolet light. Okay, so if you want to make changes to the data stored in the EEPROM chip, there is quite a process that you have to go through. You need a special gadget for it. You have to connect the chip into it. You know, there is a bit of a long process. Okay, I'll just show you a very short video clip, which I have over here. Let me enable the sound also. Okay, so if you check this over here. Yeah, I have this over here. The pins. Uh, and you can see with... So this is his e, e this is his EEPROM chip, electrically programmable read-only memory. This is his EEPROM chip. Now he's going to add it, he's going to connect it to a gadget, a gadget that has ultraviolet rays in it, so that he can modify the data that is there in this chip. Okay, so a bit of a complicated process. Okay. With the notch here at the very top, you want to place that at the very top of the of the zip socket. So it's going to look very similar to this. Uh, if I can get that there. 
So top of the socket, and I'll just keep it nice and center. And then I use this to actually, you'll see those little uh, ridges in there start to come forward and actually just grabs the chip. So now the chip doesn't fall out. So the chip's ready to go. And from here what we'll do is uh, go over to the PC and we'll start using notice guys this is the device and this device has also been connected to the computer so now to go and change the data he has to go and make the changes from the computer okay but first this eprom chip has to be connected to a special gadget okay then that gadget has to be connected to the computer and then data can be changed a bit of a you know a long complicated process involved using the software So this is the software that is being used to read the data from the EEPROM chip, okay? So let's take a uh, mean scene, all do reverse couple promises uh, that we want to put it up and it will start. Okay, so this is a pretty long video. What I want to show you is when it comes to reading data from an EEPROM chip, there is a bit of a long process involved. It's not very easy for me and you to do, okay? which is why guys eprom is not that popular okay that which is why because it has is such a long process where you have to connect it to this gadget and ultraviolet rays and you know you have things like this it's not very popular people don't use it much okay however eprom electrically erasable programmable read only memory okay eprom stands for electrically erasable programmable read only memory this this that uh, device is also known as flash memory, okay? Changing data in it is very much simpler, okay? Very much more easy, okay? You simply plug in the EEPROM e device into your computer and you can change the data stored in it. So you simply plug this device into your computer and then on your computer, you can add files, delete files, modify files, you can do it. It happens very, very fast, very easy process, okay? So EEPROM is referred to as flash memory, Example of flash memory devices are SD cards or memory cards, pen drives, and SSDs, okay? So in today's world, flash memory is extremely popular, okay? So flash memory is actually electrically erasable, programmable, read-only memory, okay? That is what e, uh, flash memory is, but since that's such a long name, we do not say EEPROM, we simply say flash memory. Now, if anyone was to ask you to give examples of flash memory, you should be able to say memory card or SD card, pen drives, and SSD, solid state devices, okay? If you're wondering what are these devices, you have never heard of them before, do not worry. In our later on slides, we will be talking about these devices in detail, okay? Right, superb. Next, what we have is, we have a question coming up. Okay, so one characteristic of RAM is that it can be increased, it can be upgraded. Describe how two other characteristics of RAM and ROM affect their use. So we have to describe the characteristic. Okay, so one we can talk about is we can say the RAM is volatile. Okay, the RAM is volatile, which means it loses its data when the power is switched off. However, the ROM is non-volatile, so it does not lose any data when the power is switched off, okay? Now, they have also mentioned affect their use that we also should, you know, connect it with their use, okay? So, we can also go on to say, since the ROM does not lose any data and the power is switched off, it is perfect for storing a program called BIOS, which defines how your computer should start. Okay, quite a long answer. But look, they asked me to describe, so you have to be able to describe it, okay? Another characteristic that we can talk about is we can talk about the fact that data in the RAM is, sorry, you can say the RAM, data in the RAM is swappable. Swappable as in you can add new data, you can take out data, okay? So the data in the ROM is not swappable. Data in the ROM is read only. You can only read data from the ROM. You cannot add anything new to the ROM chip. Okay, so you can say since uh, the user will be opening and closing programs, it is ideal to store it in the RAM because data in the RAM is swappable. However, the ROM only stores one program which is known as BIOS. Okay, so the ROM, so you can say data in the ROM is non swappable. Okay, so these are two characteristics that you can mention. I have also put the marking scheme answers over here. Okay. So something that we have not spoken about is the size. So you can say RAM is smaller as it is only used to store the boot instructions, BIOS instructions. 
while the RAM is bigger, so it can be used to store larger applications, gaming applications, video editing applications, media players, all things like that can be held in your RAM chip, okay? So I hope it makes sense to you, okay? I hope it's going well. I hope I'm not explaining too fast. If anything, do get in touch with me. Okay, so with this, we'll end this video. And in our next video, we move on to secondary storage, okay? So we have now completely finished primary storage, okay? Primary memory devices. This area, we have completely finished it. So now we move on to secondary memory, okay? So we will deal with this in our next video, okay? See you guys in the next video.